It's my pleasure to introduce two of our students from Spain Park. They are not only outstanding athletes, they're outstanding young men and women, and they're outstanding students. Madeline and Will, if you'll come up so I can brag on you while you're in front of everybody. <laughs> These are folks that we certainly want going out of our school system in a, in a few days to represent us as a product of Hoover City School, not only athletically, but academically and socially. They are going to be leaders in our community, and we are very, very proud of them. But specifically tonight, I want to confirm an award that's previously been presented to them, and they've been through all the hoopla. In fact, we call the full school assembly just for these two students to recognize them one day. Uh, the um, Heisman that we've all experienced here living in Alabama, you know a little bit about the Heisman Award, but uh, there's also a high school Heisman Award. And it uh, encompasses not only the athletic part of a student, as the real Heisman Award does for colleges, but it looks at uh, the, the person that they are, the community service, and their academic posture as well in their school system. So we are very proud to be represented by these two students. The way this system works is, out of uh, each state, there's a young man and a young lady that are chosen. So this is the first time in the history of this Heisman Award that both the young man and the young lady have been chosen from the same high school in the state. So they were our nominees for our school, and then they went on to win the state contest as well as the Heisman recipients for the state of Alabama. And before you break into applause, <laughs> Will then took this one notch higher as he does and moved on actually to be one of six national finalist as the male and got to go to New York and be part of the Heisman presentation. So tonight I present to you Alabama and the national representative, Ms. Madeline Hill and Mr. Will Freeman. Regular board meeting of December the 9th, 2013. 
Do I have a motion to approve these minutes, please? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Now to the personnel report. I believe Ms. Bill said we have some additions. I want to take a few minutes to look over the additions that are involved. Do you have any questions or comments from Ms. Bill? Comments or questions? Do I have a motion to approve the personnel report? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The personnel report is approved. This crazy report is predicated upon the superintendent's recommendation as set forth in the personnel report itself. Yes, sir. We make reference to Mary Beale, but uh, it is the superintendent's recommendation that these be approved. Yes, thank you. Ms. Fraser, would you take a moment? Uh, Mr. Jones is going to introduce, would like to introduce to us his newest uh, administrative team member, Mr. Brad Gannon. Absolutely. Thank you for your trust. And uh, a lot of Brad part of our team. Uh, he comes with a wealth of experience in the state of Hills, assistant principal. And unfortunately, he gets to do the night right now. So uh, he's a uh, Stepping in that position at uh, Becky about two weeks from that. So, Brad Hayne, Brad Hayne, one more. I want to thank you for the opportunity. I'm excited to be a member of Cooper City Schools and specifically Cooper High School. Mr. Hewins, it's a fantastic opportunity. I'm excited about the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any additions to the minutes? Do I have a second? Second. All in Next, we have our business items. We'll take a few minutes to look over the business portion of the agenda.
that would be the bulk of it. Uh, CMP programs, including special Superintendent is recommending that the board approve the business items. Do I have a motion to approve uh, the business actions? So moved. Do you have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The business actions are approved. Next on the agenda is the proposed 2014-2015 school calendar. Ms. Green is here tonight. Do you want to make any comments regarding the school calendar? I know you all spent a lot of time on this. I'd just like to say that we have a terrific calendar committee. They took it very seriously. They went through all of the possibilities um, methodically and had great discussion. The overriding question that we posed every time was what is best for students? What is best for students? And um, they believe that this calendar that they are proposing has the most advantages for the students of Denver with respect to uh, a learning environment, a positive learning environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. or questions regarding the proposed 2014-2015 school calendar? Thank you for your work on this. I mean, you know, you push it in one side of the balloon, it pops out the other. You can't make everybody satisfied. Uh, the whole notion about kids trying to finish school before is more of a important thing in my mind. Mm -hmm. so, it's, uh, it's not so much a tough job to do the right attack. True. That's great. Responses. We had over 200 responses and parent feedback. Um, we answered every one of those and responded to every parent feedback. Hopefully none of slipped through the cracks, but uh, you know, the responses were all very constructive and, and suggestive, and people understood when we would reply back and say, answer their questions. So hopefully, with very few exceptions, uh, we have a calendar that will benefit our community. There's no other questions or comments. The superintendent is requesting that, uh, recommend that we approve the 2014-2015 school calendar. Do I have a motion to do so? Do you have a second? Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The school calendar is approved. Next on the agenda is information reports. Mr. Oh, Craig? Uh, First of all, Ms. Sheehan has had some exciting days on the football team at Highland. Yeah, so very much so. Uh, I think they're well deserved. We're the main you know, public school national champion of the year. And we'll celebrate that uh, at the bowl game uh, on the, uh, the 20th. You know, we'll do that. So, great, great news. Our, our guys um, and our staff did a phenomenal job this year and uh, well deserved. Can we talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it's um, the USA Football Writers Association. Um, they, they, they brought us a group of sports writers for East Coast and uh, throughout, actually the Southeast also. And they, um, at the conclusion of all the state championship games across the nation, they, they award an overall champion. And I like the public school side. And uh, John Bosco is from New Jersey. And won the quite an honor. Yeah, it's quite an honor, not only for the district, but for all the hundred plus kids and coaches and everybody. And for anybody who has questions about what athletics or extracurricular activities does for kids in their lives in terms of preparation for the future. That's, that's it's impressive. very positive for our kids. And I absolutely love it. Thank you. Um, secondly and lastly, um, we some time now given considerable thought to, to uh, initialize the uh, strategic plan for 
process, uh, process that uh, would, would marry uh, community values uh, as it relates to the school system into a strategic direction, uh, strategic investment looking forward. Uh, we've, we've had similar processes in the past. We, we had, uh, I think, one that you, you participated in, Mr. Cooper, in 2004, and, and it was successful as five. That was a rezoning. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, it, it was similar. I say similar in nature um, uh, because there were aspects of that I, I, I could foresee uh, envision being part of this uh, in terms of uh, possibly using a, a market research based type firm to, uh, to uh, gather the data that, that would drive some of the, some of the decision making, some of the process. Uh, we also, in 2009, uh, did a, did a Similar process uh, is, is more financially based. The first one, as you mentioned, is, is more zoning based. Uh, I, I kind of see this one as being uh, probably broader uh, in scope, uh, terms of touching on, on uh, those various things and, and, and integrating those things in uh, a particular direction. Point. Um, that process is currently in the uh, design phase, I would say. Uh, Bring you a minimum of conceptual um, template uh, at a February board meeting. Uh, it's kind of, a, kind of a basis to pursue. How long do you think it'll take to unfold? The design piece or the, the whole process? I think that'll, that'll uh, correlate most closely with the uh, scope. Uh, and, uh, given given the, um, all the variables in place, like I said, I, I would potentially expect this to, to touch on the zoning piece as well, uh, kind of related to that capital, capital building piece. Uh, uh, integrating all those, I would say that uh, it could be pretty lengthy. I would think even the design phase, I would think um, designing those tools to gather that, uh, to gather that feedback, uh, that value set of the community, trying to integrate that into the process. Uh, I, I hate to speculate, Mr. Cooper, I, I want to So, I mean, what you're saying, I guess you're, what you're saying, I guess, is I don't want to put words in your mouth, but incorporate people across the community to get involved in the planning process to develop concepts. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. That, that value set, uh, you know, when you look at the, the process, the components to gather that data were, uh, I think, the one. Not, not that this one wouldn't necessarily incorporate data, that's the initial design phase, but there were focus groups, uh, there, were, there was uh, the New South Research that we've had success with uh, in our surveys in the past. Set that would incorporate into um, some of the decisions that would uh, ultimately uh, result in a, a strategic planning, strategic direction. On, on the, I believe the zoning, we talked about having 300 plus parents <coughs> engaged in that process. How would this, how would this process look? Would it be inclusive? Uh, how would the selection process look like? And how the communication plan work as well. It's still very much in the design phase, Mr. Murphy. Um, part of what you described is, was the, the piece that was uh, the data gathering piece, the, the folks that actually served on the open committee. In the first example, the 2004 example, uh, I think it was maybe 30 ish, Mr. Cooper, you remember? Uh, I think when we did our task force, uh, I think we had probably, uh, I'm going to guess 35, I don't, I don't, I don't remember, but it was, uh, we tried to establish a uh, cross-section representation. Um, I, mean, I, I would see this uh, kind of committee having similarities to both of those processes. Uh, and, and we'll need to sit down and uh, you know, determine, determine really how much of this we want to Get a, a, 
process, the one that was initiated in 2009, uh, it's pretty much an independently operated strategic planning process that produced great results and a lot of hard work on parts of people, particularly in the community. So I think it's a great idea. Do you see, is that going to roll well into this? <coughs> yes, I think it's awesome. I, I see it being, um, being, being the, the, the whole equation. Last time uh, it was more of a financial base, uh, which I would just see that being part of this too. Uh, but at, at some point in the process last time, the, the committee broke off into kind of functional areas. Uh, uh, they, they reviewed, uh, for example, I think one of them was, was high school, um, not staffing, but, but high school processes, high school, uh, that's where they examined, uh, you know, the, Five period versus six periods, uh, uh, teacher workload, kind of those kinds of things. Uh, so I would, I would foresee that, you know, that possibly being part of it too, that, that kind of functional approach. But I still think we also need at this point to incorporate uh, kind of the, the capital investment looking forward, uh, tied to, to uh, various uh, enrollment assumptions uh, as well as. Great idea because when you involve the community in what you described there, the whole notion <coughs> of the cut costs is going to impact some programs, some activities, some extracurricular, some not. And you know, so it's just a great way of getting a you know, fuller understanding of what the implications are of what people think they want or don't want to do or just cut the cost. And I would hope that um, there be some, some focus on potential revenue ideas as well. Take a multifaceted approach, and um, I hope that, that uh, those kinds of discussions and analysis will be part of it as well. In 05 and 09, was the uh, city leadership engaged into that discussion as well? Uh, they were, uh, if I remember all of Mr. Cooper, there were, um, there were assignments of, of where representation on the committee, uh, how it was selected, and you know, as they're saying, that's the way we. This is still in the design phase, but I think there were slots in that case um, uh, granted to city administration. And I'm going off of, of a, I'm going off memory there, Mr. Murphy. So. Okay. Um, Mr. Sweeney and I have both uh, been in, in uh, I think the dialogue is advancing, um, uh, and at this point no determinations or, 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 um, or decisions have been made, but the, the dialogue I would, I would say is advancing. We stay in um, communication with the pertinent people there, making sure that they have the data that they want, if, if they are looking over information, if there's anything else that they need, we want to make sure that it's given to them promptly and thoroughly. So um, they've really been cooperative at this point. Um, so I, I think the, um, the ball is moving forward. Any other new business? Thank you, Mr. Gregg. At this time, do we have any public participation? Mr. Singer? I'm not going to stand over here so that everyone can see me. Appreciate it. addressing the board, but I'd like to be able to take We would also around. like to see him. Sure. I've been getting a lot of compliments about my shirt, so I don't know if you ever want to It is a good thing, though. Uh, thank you very much, uh, and Happy New Year, all. Uh, I am 
very, very pleasantly surprised and happy to see that there will be uh, a work session. And a three hour work session at that. Could you give me some idea as to what's going to be discussed at the work session? It'll focus on uh, instructional issues, uh, curriculum issues, um, vision associated with that. Uh, Dr. Adams, would you yeah, I'll summarize that well enough, or she'll be part of that as well? Um, as part of uh, looking forward, uh, the uh, curriculum and uh, instruction team has been working on developing um, a very targeted focus look at uh, particularly the next five years. And you know, you have to plan ahead when we're thinking of um, graduating classes coming up, they start in ninth grade, they need a particular set of expectations as they get ready to complete their high school years with us through 12. So it takes planning in advance. And we wanted to share uh, some of the ideas <coughs> where you get your input on uh, some of the, the ideas for encouraging leadership, both with students and with teachers, developing talent within the district. Um, and at the same time, helping our students uh, make good decisions about whether they're going to college or whether they're going to be more career focused uh, of, upon exit from the high school. So um, there's just different changes coming from the state uh, and their requirements for our students. So we wanted a chance to share that with you. The Common Core will be part of that discussion. As well. Well, the Alabama College and Career Reg Standards will be part of that discussion. <laughs> Part of that discussion, you may not, it may not be part of the agenda, but I'd love for you to explain the data-driven approach to student learning. Yes, we, we can do that. In fact, no, our worry <laughs> would be that we give you too much information. No, no, yeah. I know you can't. It's, a, it's an important <laughs> process that has to be done effectively in order for things to really change appreciably in terms of student performance. Well, I appreciate that you have ears to listen uh, because we'd sure like to share that with you. So. Uh, we will have all that when we... When I've we heard go. a little bit about it. <laughs> and and that, oh, that the fourth session will take place in this room? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And the public can sit in and listen. Absolutely. And there may or may not be public comments allowed, but that's up to, up to the board. Because I, yeah, I understand typically work sessions are the public listens, but there's always the option to have some participation. Thank you, uh, yeah, thank you on that. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's, a, it's a great start. And uh, I look forward to one hour work sessions in the future to, to prepare for, for the public meetings. Okay? <coughs> now, Separately, I'm also glad to hear about the uh, program that uh, is in the planning stage for uh, community participation. <coughs> and in that regard, I would strongly <coughs> recommend that each of the board members, as individuals, and I stress as individuals, attend just as Councilman Leiter did last night, is <clears throat> very much like going to college. To come to, a, to come to a lecture and not have done the reading and not have done the preparation leaves you less able to absorb everything that's being given. So if you could think of what we're trying to accomplish as a reading list, as, as a listening, and as a question, please, we truly, truly welcome you because this is how we can establish dialogue as a community. Okay. Enough of that. Now, a public information request. Uh, several years ago, when we had the uh, electric electricity control system, and you recall uh, Mr. Cooper, Ms. Frazier. Uh, I had some questions on it. <coughs> Gary McVeigh uh, at that time provided me with a year's worth of bills from Alabama Power. And we were able to you know, do some analysis. 
I think since several years have passed since then, I would appreciate if I could get uh, a year's worth of, bill, of bills for each of the schools, similar to what we had in the past, together with the square footage then and the square footage now. For example, Hoover High School now has more square feet than it did then. So I want to be able to you know, do the comparisons. And again, this is part of the data gathering to help everyone, to help the community. So uh, I'll be giving the, uh, the email request of what I just spoke about. I'll be sending that to uh, Jason Gaston in the morning. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, you'll see me at the... Uh, when you, when you can do that side by side comparison, be sure be sure that those uh, weather normalized comparisons and factor in to the equation how many new students, how many students live mid, leave midstream, how many classes are there's a whole host of things a side by side comparison would show to me. Well that that would be interesting, except I didn't have that data for several years ago. If I if that data could be provided to me, it's great. not available, but what I'm saying is if you Take side by side numbers to numbers well, comparison. You won't come up with apples with apples with apples and grapefruit. <coughs> but uh, we we we, we can do we can do, do an adjustment of uh, calories per student. Uh, maybe that'll work out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanger. Is there anyone else that would like to speak tonight? of it has specific student names, uh, information that um, would need to be redacted. Uh, or, or, or yeah, he, at least redacted. Yeah. Uh, some of the stuff potentially would be identifiable. He didn't have to redact, so we'd have to redact. Okay, so is that a request actually going to Jason? Please. as for the Hoover buses was a variety of meeting times and days so that everyone could participate. People who work weekends may not be able to come to meetings on the weekend. People who work during the days may not be able to come during the day. People who work in the evenings. So having a variety of input, meeting times and days is extremely helpful. Um, okay. Also, I just wanted to find out if to it or any suggestions where we could perhaps focus our interest more? 
more, or is there more? That is not here. Is there more financial information that perhaps on a line item we could get access to to be more accurate in what we're discussing? Don't have any comments. Which species you talking about? Stipend things? Pardon? Which species you talking about? Stipend things? All of them. All of them. Whether it's the supplements, whether it is just all of the line items, because we are working with a very high level amount of information, and to really benefit everybody, it would be better if we could dive in and find out like exactly what. Like you asked for explanation today, what was included in a particular line item. So for us to, you know, because we're, we're a big group of good people, smart people, and we all have different insights, but in order to get an accurate assessment, we would need to know exactly what is contained in the line item. I think it's important to keep in mind an accurate assessment based upon numbers and financial <coughs> It's an interesting piece. It's a data-driven piece. The numbers are what the numbers are. Mm -hmm. But I will say there's a lot more to that than just numbers. Such as? Such as, I believe, to Mr. Hewitt. You can say you pay too much for football or whatever you want to talk about in terms of extracurricular activities. But when you talk about the benefits to students, you talk about preparation for students, you talk about offerings to differentiate this school district from somebody else, anywhere over the mountain or beyond, you can't quantify that necessarily in data. So, for all of us to say we're going to cut here, cut there, because it's going to have implications at the student level that haven't been addressed. Understood, understood. But I also know <coughs> that the majority of the boys that graduated with my son in 2009 who were on the football team are no longer in college. So, <laughs> there is more so, to every... And your point is? My point is preparation for the continuing life. I'm not going to, I'm not sinking down. Okay. We fully understand that there are other ramifications with any type of cut or decrease or increase. So, on that note, what are the long term plans to repay our $325 million debt? We've got Amortization schedule and debt service schedule, and I was going to honor that commitment. I didn't know it was 325. I'm not sure what it is, but I don't think it's that much. It is, we know the numbers. Is um, that an add up to annual payment? It's annual or payments and interest. And 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 interest. So it's principal and interest. Yeah. So it's fairly accurate. Um, uh, not, not like you were talking about the principal amount, which most time when you talk about loan balance. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to preempt. We got we got a process. <coughs> we got we got our sides on the process, and I'm not going to preempt that process. I'm going to let these decisions, uh, this data analysis, come naturally out of that. So I'm not going to preempt that with uh, a decision about whether this should be cut or shouldn't be cut or this should be analyzed. I think we're going to get all that. So we're going to have a study before we decide what to cut. We're going to we're going to go through a strategic planning process. Just like we described earlier. Okay, that's a wonderful idea. Thank you. <coughs> um, my name is Lisa Singer. I'm a parent of a current uh, Spain Park <coughs> senior and a uh, young child that will be going to Spain Park in a year's time. Um, I have been part of the group working on both the effort to uh, save the buses and the budget group that's been trying to come up with some different ideas for the schools to make the cuts that need to be made to uh, balance the budget. And I'm very interested in this process you're talking about strategic planning. And I would like to ask the board that some people who have already been so involved in this process of looking at what's involved in our school budgets and systems and uh, be, be included in this process. We've already, many of us devoted a lot of time to this. <coughs> it's something that we feel very invested in, and we would like to be part of that process. It's very much in the design phase, and you can certainly send me a request to be, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll accumulate those uh, once we determine how that will be comprised, how it will be selected, how the feedback will be gathered. And I'm, I'm really not clear. You're talking about, you said it's a long term process about what would be the out, the longest time it would go over. Are you looking at something that would help to start 
reducing the budget deficit in, year, in a year's time? So or are you looking way further down the road? Uh, that that will be a component of the discussion. Uh, we're in a we're we're in a situation now where we have a very strong balance sheet. We finished the most recent fiscal year with uh, just under eight months of our reserve and our base operating funds. That's eight times what the state recommends. <coughs> But the outlook is not so so good. So uh, we're on, on one hand we're in, we're in, we're blessed to be in a position to be able to to be out in front of that and be able to methodically look at ways to, to reposition ourselves. So so uh, I think it's it's a good thing that we can we can spread that out and not try to not be in a position where if we do from paycheck to paycheck we absolutely have to balance the budget for next year. We, to some extent, there, there will be some, some, within that base operating funds, there will be some deficit spending because we received uh, a lump sum, a lump sum that was financed by, uh, uh, on the surface, a 20-year sales tax. So, uh, you know, by virtue of the way that money flowed, uh, there is going to be some level of, of uh, deficit spending. It's, it's the pace of, of that deficit spending. Until that money runs out, and then we're forced to Process begin a lot further before monies evaporate. I certainly hope so. <laughs> beginning now, yeah, yeah. It's beginning yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When do you anticipate a group like that starting? I know it's still in the design phase, but do you have a general timetable for when they would start meeting? I do not. I mean, I, I mean it's in the design phase. Uh, we've got meetings scheduled. Scope to talk about what what uh, data gathering methodology we may use uh, within that scope. So this is again, it's, it's in the design phase. It's, it's the best I can do at this point. I, I hope to bring that to the board uh, uh, at least a conceptual uh, template. No one ever said who it was with, so I just wanted to clarify. Yeah. That's what I said. <coughs> Some of us know that, that you were looking to hire some more bus drivers for some of the ones that have been lost. And uh, there was some question about whether uh, bus drivers who have been in our system and left have been asked to come back. Many of them left because that they felt they had a lack of job security, um, but, but were happy working here prior to that. And just they were good, experienced bus drivers that you know, knew our kids. And <coughs> Through our posting procedures, uh, uh, not for our best candidates. Thank you. Thank you. Trish. <coughs> <coughs> My name is Trish Crane. I live in the Green Valley area. Uh, speak up, Trish, please. Yeah, is this on? No. Hello? No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know, I don't know who to ask um, of this, 
Church, I know that we have a new assistant principal, and I have been, and I know that Robin Reiniger has now retired as of December 31st. And I have been waiting, I've been watching, you know, when are we going to hire a new principal for Trace Crossing? When are, I never saw a job posting for an assistant principal. And so you say that we're going to go through the posting procedures. Is there ever any exception to that that is allowed? Well, there's various, uh, various things under the Students First Act where reassignments can take place uh, with or without work or with it, depending on the circumstances. But uh, we certainly feel like uh, we're in the law in that, in that situation. So is Carol Barber the principal of Trace Crossing at this point? She was this morning. Okay. Still am. Okay. <laughs> and, and has she been principal of Trace Crossing since the day you went out there and that was delineated in the in the newspaper, whatever that was, November the whatever. Was there ever any interim period where Carol Barber was not principal? Uh, I'm not sure if all of the no, I just she's, she's served as principal, uh, whether whether it's technically on an acting or interim or whatever basis, uh, Okay, but did y'all ever approve a board action that said she was a principal? Uh, I don't believe so. Uh, okay. But there's, you know, there's various reassignments. Um, traffic study question. I know uh, we were doing a traffic study. I think we might have moved maybe called Skipper Consulting uh, because I found a check in the check register for like $2,900 um, in November, I think it was. I, I sent an information request. That's one of those information requests uh, asking for the invoice that went along with that check. Can you give us an update on the traffic study? Where it stands? Will it be completed at this point? Are we? It's, it's ongoing. Uh, again, the same. Uh, they're, they're doing work. Uh, they're evaluating uh, an attempt coming up with circulation plans. Uh, it's progressive. Okay, and along those lines, not knowing that there, whether or not there will be a fee for families, is there, um, are they taking that into account that, you know, if we come up in April and say, hey, y'all, it's going to be $50 a month, there will be families who do have options uh, that will choose not to ride the buses, and therefore we don't really know, like it's how you, how you plan for that if you don't know what the fee is and you don't know what your rider is. They're making assumptions about uh, ridership. Uh, I would say that they're uh, at this point analyzing that on, a, on a, uh, the most impactful basis assumption. Oh, exactly. You know, and I know Jason and I have talked about how one year one apartment complex shut down and all of a sudden Rocky Ridge had 100 new students, you know, and, and that was completely unknown. I, I just, this, this would be something new for Hoover. I think we have a lot of traffic and I think there's reason to still be concerned. Um, you know, I know that you made a, a statement at the last board meeting that the model that you're looking at is to employ our own bus drivers. Is there assurance that that model will hold true? Can you, it, it, because what I heard you say, you know, on July 15th, y'all said there would be no buses. And on December 9th, you said there would be buses. And on July 15th, you said there would be no bus drivers. And on December 9th, you said, yes, we think that the model that we're thinking about right now would involve having our own bus drivers. Are there assurances that the bus drivers will be employed by the, I mean, are we looking at privatizing at all at this point? Uh, not that I know, not that okay. I'm aware of. Uh, okay. there, there's potentially, uh, we have started a process where we potentially uh, contract vacancies, uh, perhaps like long-term leaves, potentially, but, but the base model would be, would be like that. Okay. I, I can't promise you to be that way forever, but that's, that's what we and I do want to say, well, I was disappointed not to see anybody there last night. We did stream it live via you stream, so you can go back and look at the video. Something I hope that Mr. Gaston will employ for y'all's board meetings at some point. Um, I have spoken to y'all for a long time, sometimes on friendly terms, sometimes not so much. And I want you, I hope that you will be open to the idea that <coughs> I have been extremely impressed with the caliber of people that stepped up when the call was put out. Hey, you know, we took our direction from the state <coughs> superintendent. 
Y'all might want to step up and offer your own solutions because sometimes the people who are making the decision <coughs> have run out of solutions. And so we took that seriously. And we did a whole lot of digging. And I think what you hear the questioning about the process, I've seen as many processes as you have. And the people who end up on these committees tend to be those that are either on PTO, attend church with one or more of the board members, or are somehow already in the inner circle. And Hoover is a really big, wide place now. There's some awfully good people that bring a lot of different perspectives to the table. And I hope that you will ensure that when you get going towards this process that even if you only have a table for 15, that there's always a place for public input and public discussion. Because you can do that, you know? We used to have work sessions where um, after each discussion item, y'all would ask for public input. I, I hesitate to say those were the good old days, but there was this feeling of mutual two-way communication. I hope that we can restore that. I think we, I think we can get there uh, if we just sort of maybe smile at each other a little more and understand that we all love children and that we really want the best for our community. Um, so I just want to ask you to please keep your mind open to the folks. What, what you see oftentimes standing at this podium is frustration. You know, we don't have access to the same information y'all do. When I learned how to hack, I might, but I don't know how to do that yet. So, but I don't have access to the same information. They don't have access to the same information. So, you know, I think information can clear a whole lot of this stuff up. And I'm looking forward to seeing Mr. Gaston uh, draft a wonderful communication plan to roll out and tell us all about this fabulous strategic planning process that you're going to engage in. Yes, sir. You brought up a good point. I mean, that, I'm pretty excited about what he's proposing here. I haven't seen any structure, so <clears throat> that may be seen. I'm pretty confident that it's going to be great. The thing I would caution you guys, if you're cautioning us about various things, is you've got tremendous amount of data you've accumulated over a number of years, and it's great, and you, you are a you're a master at scrubbing those numbers and looking at all that. But what I found out, for myself at least, is that, and I alluded to this a few minutes ago, is within those numbers, within those thoughts, and within those things that seem so blatantly obvious, because it is data, it is black and white, it is numbers, they are numbers, are the implications. And when we go back and we say we all love kids, and the whole thing is focused on students, it's really, really difficult when you start peeling back the onion to see what impact it really has on kids. You can say your kids, your son graduated with a whole bunch of kids don't go to college. Everybody's not cut out for college. That's why the ladies over there a workforce development and career tech as opposed to four-year college prep. And, and we're moving in that direction too. So we're trying to broaden the umbrella for, for every kid as much as we can. May I respond to that? Just a minute. And that is say, uh, look for the implications. And it's going to be, it's hard to find those implications unless you've got the broad-based community input and all that you know, piece of also captured in a strategic plan. Absolutely. And I think it's really important, you know, I think whenever we produce a document, y'all have done it, we've done it, I've done it, you've done it, you produce a document and people pretty much do with it what they want. They interpret it the way they want to. It's very, very, very important to understand that that document, that green white paper, is not here. That's it. It's not here. We need to reduce that. What we did, it's important to understand what our task was, which was where is money being spent? Okay, specifically, you know, you've got areas of programs, policy, personnel, budget practices. And I've talked about that one for a long time, right? So there are various areas that we start looking at. And what I really liked about this process was, it wasn't something I made up, by the way, um, but what I really liked about this process was it can pass funding task forces, and truly no disrespect intended, because most school districts do it this way, 
they say, let's produce a couple of pages of information with the information that we want to share with the community. And then they say, here, play with these cards. And what we did was different in that it was, here's all the information. Go dig around, see what you can find. And to trust, I don't know that that trust exists. Well, but see, but you just, what you just said is true, but you didn't nail the what. You don't nail the who, when, why, how much. Uh, that, that's where the that's where the bigger picture has to come into play. And take what you had in terms of data and put it in some context. And that is, that's why we wanted very glad to get together and talk about it. You know? I mean, we didn't do it just because we didn't have anything else to do over well, I'm just gonna say this right now to some of the and that is, we wanted the same thing for this public meeting, but we didn't exactly sit there and talk about it. You know? And that, that was a little bit disturbing, I think, for most of us sitting here at this table, to sit there and take the, the feedback and the comments and, and, the, and the things that were not very pleasant. I, like, can you clarify? I don't know what you mean. You yeah, mean? because we ask for answers, it's, and we're never we've given got, them. We've got a protocol that we expect to follow. Yeah, well, if you're not going to answer her you questions. Can be excused, we'll be uh, in recess. I don't know what you mean. What are, you, what are you saying? That you wanted to have dialogue with us? Well, I mean, the whole thing was meant to have community input and dialogue. Mm -hmm. and it, was a, it was almost blasphemy at the points. And, 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 and I don't Do you think understand why people were frustrated and upset? Well, I understand they were frustrated and upset because they didn't have all the information. No one ever has all the information. And I think that's fine. Everybody cannot have all the information all the time. But you guys sit in the seat where the decisions are made. See, I mean, it, it's, we are subject to your decisions, right? I mean, you guys pass a budget. I came to your May, remember? I had no faith. Came to you in May, and I said, hey, y'all, when y'all are looking over your budget, <coughs> can you make sure that resources are allocated appropriately to make sure that all the kids have resources, right? That's what I basically <coughs> came and said. I said I'd get on my knees, you know? and beg you to do so. Two months later, a decision is made that quite frankly blindsided me. You and I spoke that evening, okay, about it. And so what happened was this extra case of a bad decision being made that upset a large portion of the community. I understand half the folks wanted it, but half the folks didn't. And so what you saw was a textbook case of a community frustrated and wanting to dialogue, you know? I mean, I'll, we'll meet and I'll let you listen to the audio tapes of the meetings that we had. It wasn't that we weren't, no, I'm just there was no I'm, opportunity yeah, to dialogue. That. I got that. But what I'm telling you though is it's impossible for that guy down there to share with you confidential discussions he's having with a third party provider trying to see if that's a viable alternative. We can't do that. We'll have to disagree. Well, agree to disagree. You know, you're not entitled to all the information all the time. You're just not. You know. And I understand that. That has been your stance since have to be day one. Right. They have to be taken place. I wasn't involved in those discussions either. I never met the people because we don't we don't make decisions. We respond to recommendations that ultimately turn into decisions. Right. You know, I, you know, I'm excited that um, we're moving forward. Planning and also number one work session. I think that's a start. And I think uh, you know, we are community and not only love kids but love, love the city as well. So I'm excited about that. And I, I think that uh, I believe that we're going to have some great dialogue. I do believe it will be uh, a uh, more so of a community engagement on all sides. Yeah, it'll be, uh, you know, we'll be in, in several different rooms of our city. I appreciate that. And, and I, uh, I just believe be, you. Just, just, just me, hear what's going on, and uh, we're going to have a great meeting on the 23rd, <laughs> uh, for three hours, uh, talking about the Common Core and so many other factors. And, uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Uh, and I appreciate that. And in a row, we'll have to have the coffee, right? But as long as you're buying this time. I'll, I'll buy <laughs> this time. Anyway, um, I do appreciate it. I just, I, you know, guys, these are great people out there. They're just upset. They, when, you're, when you're the one, it's like being the child. It's like when, you know, I tell my son, well, actually, I've never told him he can't go out. But, you know, if I told him he couldn't do something, you know, when you don't have the decision-making authority, it is frustrating. And I, I know y'all understand that. I want to see, I've been a part of healthy dialogue with education. I think we can get there if we commit. Well, our world can smile more after town. Dr. Cameron's mom. Um, no, no, but we, you know, we, we really do. We can, we can start this thing over. I've just taken way too long up here. I didn't really mean to, but I appreciate your willingness to respond to my questions. Um, and I look for further good dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Frazier, could I just yes, sir. mention something in response to what Ms. Quinn says? Our commitment, our position with the Justice Department is that Hoover is going to provide transportation for the 2014-2015 school year with its transportation department, with its bus drivers. And uh, Mr. Craig, the transportation department, I do not see anything at this point that would change that, nothing. So that that is our position. There's no equivocating about that. Secondly, we are very sensitive to the timing aspect of it. And um, we, we hope that um, uh, we'll be able to have information um, in a timely fashion. We don't know about to be, um, I don't know, but we know that that's important to everybody, the bus drivers, the students, everybody, and we, we're keeping that in mind. And finally, I'd say the dialogue from July to December was a rough and tumble dialogue, um, give and take throughout, but it's, my belief in talking to all of y'all that we believe this school system is much better positioned to go forward in the future and tackle these challenges because of the input that we've gotten from all quarters of this community. Absolutely. So to the extent that Ms. Kling um, was frustrated, the board was frustrated, we all were meeting difficult challenges earnestly and I think we're better positioned now uh, to resolve those issues. Thank you. Mr. Right here, what Mr. Sweeney had to say. Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. And I'll try and smile. I get serious. Um, but the boys that I am, young men that I am speaking of, the majority of them did go to college on football scholarships and could not find their way once they were there. Also, and I'm smiling when I say this, I do find it interesting that we are now talking about implications to cutting portions of our budget. Because that's what we've been talking about since July, is the implication. Anyone else? Can you talk about your name, please? My name is Gianna Zellner. I've been up here several times. I have a daughter at Bear. I am also a teacher in another district. So I understand a lot of the implications you are talking about. I am a teacher who took a pay cut rather than see students lose what I teach to school. I have been told that our school, <coughs> being a private school, has lost a lot of students because of things that have happened at our school. And that all of us may be looking for new positions. I understand that. I am a teacher who at my school teaches 100% of the student body. I'm a drama teacher. But I would much rather see drama theater taken out of a high school and a middle school where it affects perhaps 10% of the students than talk about cutting buses that affect 50% of the students. Please do not talk to us about implications as if we do not understand. Excuse me, you seem a bit angry. Gee, I wonder why. Either. Let me ask you one thing, okay? 
We are people that are trying to do the best that we possibly can, okay? I don't like the tone that you're taking with the board right now. And I don't like the tone you're taking with me or the tone you took on the day that you told parents who might not be able to ride the buses that perhaps they should get into a carpool. You do not understand. <clears throat> now, you talked about a wide scope of people that you are going to get into discussions. Did any of you read the almost 2,000 responses we got to our petition? That's an awful lot of input that we have all read, looked at, and understand. Some of it, but about, if you would go back and look, about 80% of it were Hoover residents. Please, go look at the numbers. Come back and correct me if I am wrong. We would like to know, how was Andy's trip to D.C. paid for? It has been intimated the trip was voluntary. Did the school system pay for a voluntary trip? Mm-hmm. Another answer we're going to get. Who went, with DC, who went to D.C. with Andy? Did Mr. Sweeney go? Another answer we're not going to get. How many Hispanic children, could you tell us, have withdrawn from our schools since the buses were originally set, when the buses were originally cut? We would like to know the implications that your decisions made, you know, the implications of how many students we lost. Same thing, African-American students. <coughs> Regarding the recent eWeek article, who exactly decides what hardware is purchased by the school system? Has the poll been taken to gauge how many Dell Chromebooks to purchase? Why is our school system purchasing unproven devices? The Samsung Chromebooks had issues when they were first released. Do you realize that within a week of these Chromebooks being handed out to the students, all of the parents received an email? saying how many Chromebooks had already been broken. One week. Is that the new technology that we're going to get? Stuff that is not going to stand up a week, the students that they're given to? Thank you. Ms. when Mr. Craig made his presentation about his trip to um, Washington, made it clear that he was the only one that went on that trip, and it was at board expense, and it was board um, business, and it was appropriate as far as the auditors uh, were concerned. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am? Sabrina Lewis, the mother of a ninth grader at Spain Park High School. I just want to say there's been a lot of talk about implications. I don't understand all the implications. I am here to offer myself to volunteer to engage in peaceful, productive dialogue as a member of the public and as a parent. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. My name is Dennis Cruz. I still live in South Wood Highlands. Um, I am formally requesting an opportunity to join your committee that you're going to. I'm part of the committee here that's been working an awful lot on ideas uh, for how we can cut the budget. I have a lot of experience working with multi-million dollar budgets, creating them, managing them, and executing them. And I will give you that service. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public participation tonight? Yeah. 
high school. Um, I have two children, one at Greystone Elementary and one at Berry Middle School. I am thrilled, I'm elated, I'm ecstatic that you guys decided to rescind your decision and the buses are reinstated. Thank you very much. What I'm about to say is not going to be very popular with Free the Buses. I was a proponent of for Save the Buses, but I'm not for Free the Buses. Um, the information that I've read is um, I'm not for or do I support the cuts that have been recommended. I don't want any advanced placement. I don't want any extracurricular. I don't want any cuts made to the school system that will dumb down our schools for free buses. I don't want my property taxes raised. I pay a lot of property taxes as it is. There are people in our school systems who, in our school system who do not pay property taxes. I don't want to put the bill for other people to pay or to have free, free bus service when I pay. If you increase my property taxes, that never goes away. If I pay for the buses, that will eventually go away when my children are out of school. I realize that my, my opinion is not popular, but there are other people in the school system who don't want the schools dumbed down. You take away the good teachers, you take away all the advantages that the school offers, you're dumbing down the school, people don't want to move in, and you lose the quality of, of um, education. Thank you very much. Excuse me, could you repeat your last name? I missed it. I'm sorry. Gasser, G-A-S-S-E-R. Thank you. Thank you. To balance the budget, there's going to be pain. You can't avoid it. You cannot be avoided. Everyone's going to have their sacred cows or programs that they want to say, and I don't want to dumb down the school either. I have a daughter in the school. I want her to have every opportunity that she can have. But make no mistake, you can't balance that budget without some severe cuts. The best way is for us to try and do it as equitable as possible. So no one department has to bear it all, but some departments can bear more than others. We have to be smart enough to do it the right way, judiciously, so that we don't dumb down, but we're going to have to get up things everywhere. Can I just make one quick comment? You can make ten. I just, what I'm saying is I don't want to dumb down the schools for free bus but service. It's such a small percentage of the deficits. I understand that. Yeah, that, you know, if you, if you did away with the bus, you don't save a lot. Like I said, my opinion is not hot. No, no, Happy New Year. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate your service. I'm Dan Fulton. I live on Alford Avenue. And that's been my legal residence since 1956. I taught 27, graduated the University of Alabama, Crimson Tide, roll time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, most of my family are Auburn supporters. <laughs> but uh, tough week. But anyway, um, it goes down to about two plays, I think, in both games. But anyway, um, I wanted to uh, say that I taught 27 years at uh, Birmingham City Schools, Last 18 at Jack Snowland High School, our teacher of the year, math teachers from Jack Snowland this year. Um, the, uh, Mayor Coachman from Fairfield, a former student, Jack Snowland. Uh, Menard Kincaid, Jack Snowland. Um, uh, had a lot of co workers, Mr. Murphy's familiar with that, that I worked with his grandmother at Jack Snowland High School. Um, and uh, we worked, Jack Snowland, very closely with Holy Family, which I think he attended. But uh, I just want to say, of course, that we're in an atmosphere where taxpayers and the public expect transparency and accountability. And there are times, of course, when you have uh, negotiations with a vendor that that's, while that's going on, you can't release all of the inf specific information, and that's understandable. But anything that we can do to enhance and improve transparency and accountability, I think is going to bring more support from the general community. Uh, the group that I've been participating, participating with, with, Ms., uh, with uh, a various group here, is um, 
and the study that we started was really um, motivated by Dr. Bice at the State Department of Education because he encouraged uh, those who had talked to him to pursue that study and it's been very difficult getting the numbers and the data so that you really can make an accurate analysis. But that's what we've been trying to do and as much data as you can provide would be very helpful. Now, uh, Mr. Craig, did, have you discussed your study with Dr. Bice? I have not. No. Right. And who will design the study? Uh, that, that will start, or it has started, uh, designed over the, I'll, I'll be part of that. Uh, uh, various folks here will be part of that. Uh, the template will be provided to the board. Uh, at that point, it certainly become public discussion. Uh, Do you have, is there an outside consulting firm helping with this? Uh, I'm meeting with uh, a person tomorrow that has experience in the process, has, has administered those kinds of processes uh, across other districts uh, to, to uh, begin to plan that. Right, right. Um, in regard to the Ustream, I know the Mobile County Schools re, uh, Ustream their meetings. I've been following them. And the State Department of Education Ustreams their meetings. I would really like you to try to do that because some of us have health issues. Um, some people are homebound, but they'd like to follow the schools and what's going on. So I would seriously uh, request that you see if you can not set that up. It's, I don't think it's very costly. In fact, we restreamed, did the Ustream with the meeting that we had yesterday. Uh, and if you go to Hoover Facts, Dot wordpress dot com hooverfacts dot wordpress dot com you can see the u stream and also the basic outline of some considerations that we have brought up and we call them suggestions and considerations because again we just do not have uh, some data where you can make a definite conclusion now um, I was a big Bear Bryant fan I have to have a YouTube interview my students did with him at Parker High School in 1973. And so I'm, I'm not against uh, football or any sports. And I think uh, Hoover Schools, I would like them to have everything. I was in swimming and athletics at the University of Alabama. And, and when I was living in Minnesota for a while, we had a short course Olympic pool at the high school, at the middle school. I was in seventh grade. My first period class was swimming. I think there should be such a poo at Hoover High School, at Spain Park. But now we're probably talking about the future, because now we're not there. Once we can get a revenue stream, Mr. Lida can get us some more money from maybe the city council, or maybe we have some generous people to donate. That's probably not realistic. Uh, in fact, in Tuscaloosa, the first natatorium was a gift of Jack Warner about a, a Gulf State paper. I and mean, I worked in the locker room, and the, and the coach, Foster, said, don't you ever ask him for identification. So I always provided him the towel and the soap, and he went right on through. Um, but, and then one final uh, comment in regard to stipends. When I was at Jackson Nolan High School, I was department head. I was paid $50 a month. That was my stipend, and it was fixed. If my salary went up, the stipend stayed $50. Now, I was the PTA sponsor at the school. My stipend was zero. It didn't increase. It stayed zero. I sponsored a club, a video club. That's how we have videos from 1973 up in the 80s uh, on my YouTube. Um, The stipend for the video club, although I spent my own money, was zero. The gym, we had only one gym. So the girls' basketball team would practice. You know this, Mr. Murphy. They would practice from 3 to 5. So the boys had a study hall. I supervised that study hall for the basketball team. So that then they went in on the gym at 5. My stipend for that, zero. Now, why did I do that? Because it was part of doing the job of a quality teacher. So when you review those budgets, I would look at the stipends 
as much as I love football, I do not believe you need a posi all the position coaches that were showing up in the data that, I, that I'm seeing. We didn't have them at Jackson Nolan. We had some, I think we did pretty well. And uh, so those are just some of the thoughts I wanted to share with you, and we appreciate your service. But again, you ask for it, and you hear some of this anger, criticism, uh, it's part of the job. Some days when I was teaching, I had some parents who were very irate about something. And I've had to tackle students who were attacking another student. Got socked in the face for one of the encounters. But that's part of the job. It's not easy. Thank you. that they pay, which are proportionally higher than what we pay individually on, on our cell phone homes, is factored into the rent and still gives the owner of the complex a profit. So there is nobody attending the school for free. Everybody, every piece of property, unless it's owned by a tax-exempt organization such as a church is taxed. Utilities are taxed. Railroads are taxed. Timberlands are taxed. So there is a tax. Now, separate question. Uh, we had an addition to Hoover High School. How was that funded? Uh, probably, technically, probably a mixture. As I'm looking at Mr. Singer, probably a mixture between uh, public school funds and local funds. Uh, was there uh, a bond issue, a warrant issue, or uh, additional monies? It was, our, it was our fund balance. Uh, again, recollection, I think there were some accumulated public school funds. It was, it was, it was not funded by bond. So, in other words, uh, that would be an example of something that was funded from the monies that we received as part of the 1% sales tax. But that was the purpose of it, was for school construction, we can renovation. Trace we could trace it back to the general ledger, but, but uh, my recollection is technically that money was gone, uh, paid out debt service. Everything that the committee did comes out as <coughs> suggestions, as things to be looked at. We aren't saying cut here, cut there, etc. We are saying everything should be looked at. Things should be prioritized because you cannot 
reduce a deficit. And you, essentially, if we keep on the same path we're on now, we're going to have a deficit every year until the cash runs out. So, there w and every individual area that will be looked at has its champions, has people who will live and die to keep the status quo. So there's going to be disappointment along the way if this deficit is to be tackled. It doesn't have to be all eradicated in one year, but we certainly have to make significant changes before the next budget is introduced. So, yeah, we're, we're taking a look at uh, at enrollments. Typically, enrollments are increasing each year. I think we only had one year, and that was right after uh, that was right about the time that we had the last task force. But otherwise, the enrollments have been going up. Well, if we increase the class size by one student per, we don't have to add teachers. The idea is expenditures that you don't have to make represent savings in much the same way that cuts that you make. Either way, it, it, it affects in a, in a positive way the reduction of the deficit. So it's, it's things that we still have to look at. I know you've already had to be started in the budget process for, for this coming year, at least at the school and department level, and that will be moving forward, and decisions with regard to staffing uh, typically occur around April. So there's not much time to be, uh, to be dealing with it. Yeah, your example of one student per classroom is precisely why classroom sizes are what they are, and we're down 100 teacher units over the last five years. It's not I mean, it's been going on. Uh, I, I, I would love to see the, uh, the data on that, okay? Yes, we did reduce something like a, a 100 or 110 teacher positions as a result of the task force, which tied into increased class size. But the following year, we increased the number of teachers. So we added 300 kids. But gee. But gee. They don't all come in one grade, they don't all come in one now, class. Are, 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 there, are there other ways of tackling it? Perhaps. This kind of staff? No. That's perhaps, what they've been doing for the last five perhaps, years. Perhaps adding another period of teaching per day. Perhaps. Perhaps starting early. Perhaps, Perhaps starting early. Right. There, there are many all, potential all. solutions, and this is where, <coughs> you, you see, what frustrates the public is not finding out about what's going to happen until the recommendation is made by the superintendent to the board. This would be the benefit of work sessions. This would be the benefit of dialogue. We can't wait until this, you know, and the thing is, if I were on the board, I would be agreeing with 95% of the recommendations that, that the superintendent makes to the board. And I'd be open to listening about the other 5%. So it's, it's not that, you know, the board is doing wrong in approving the recommendations of the superintendent, but in all the time that I've been here, coming to board meetings, there was one instance where a uh, recommendation was tabled for a month, which you, you and Ms. Frazier were, were part of. And one
found dissension on a vote, and that was by Mr. Barkey, and that was with regard to school busing. It's hard to understand how there could be all of these unanimous votes. There's got to be, somebody says, maybe we're moving a little too fast. Maybe we should table something, have some more discussion, and then bring it back up on the table. That's what we're not seeing.
um, this is not about buses and it's not about taxes and it's not about funding. Um, I just feel compelled to make a statement based on some of the earlier comments about my role at Trace Crossings. First of all, because I know how social media and I know how things get tweeted out. And I know right now in that Trace Crossings community there's some concern. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Craig for giving me the opportunity to go to Trace Crossings. And I want to thank the board for allowing me that opportunity to be at Trace Crossings. And I want to assure you that I'm there voluntarily. I'm there because I want to be there. And I do not intend to leave Trace Crossings. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Ms. Barber told me the other day I couldn't go out there with a truck. <laughs> you know, what I said to him... Something like that. <laughs> you know, what I said to him was that the next time I leave Trace Crossings, if I leave Trace Crossings without being my decision to leave Trace Crossings, it would be a pine box feet close. Oh, that's <laughs> what I leave Trace Crossings. Ms. Barbara, I understand you have a new grandbaby on the way. I do. I do. And, this, well, the rumors, that does not mean I'm retiring. <laughs> they don't even live anywhere close around here, so yeah, there we go. Any other public participation tonight? Thank you for everyone's input. Thursday, January the 23rd from 3 to 6 p.m. Also here in the